the Islanders are expected to be a Stanley Cup competitive team this year. They added Zach Parisi. They added Zdeno Chara. They have some really good young players, Pulak and Pelik, who just signed eight-year deals, and they're going to be their lead defenseman moving forward. They did not have a good game on Thursday night. Now, I know it's game number one. It's against a very good Carolina Hurricane team that was one of the favorites of winning the Stanley Cup last year. And I expect Carolina to be one of the favorites this year as well with the team that they have, offensively and defensively. And that kid, Ajo, looks like he's a really, really good player. They have some good young players on that roster. And I love Rob Brindamore. His nose is one of the ugliest noses I've ever seen. (laughs) But he is one of the nicest guys. I met him in Dallas at the draft. We were in the same hotel. I actually got to go to the bar and actually talk to him. And Filk and Anthony LaRocca actually were standing in the same elevator with him and almost crapped their pants that they were right next to Rob Brindamore. Question. Who has an uglier nose? Daryl Sutter or Rob Brindamore? Rob Brindamore. Oh my god, it's an ugly nose, man. It's big and it's ugly. It looks like it's been broken in like six different places. It's horrible. Who knows? Maybe it has. It's a horrible looking nose. But nice guy, and he knows hockey. And he was a pretty good hockey player when he he was in the NHL in the late 80s, early 90s. He was pretty good. But last night, the defense of the Islanders, I don't know where the hell they were. I don't know if they were playing. And Sorokin, you can't blame all the goals on Sorokin, but Sorokin did not look good in game number one. I know he's the second-year player. Valamov isn't there. You can't put all the pressure on this young goaltender, but to go into game number one and give up five goals, it's embarrassing for a team to be one of the favorites, one of the top four favorites of going to the Stanley Cup. There were so many people in the Hockey Digest and on some of these different magazines and newspapers saying that they believe the Islanders are coming out of the East and could win the Stanley Cup. Not the way they play. The sad part is they let Tony D'Angelo get two points, naturally. <laughs> That's what the Rangers are going to do. All their players are going to go to the Hurricanes and be good again. Brady Shea and now Jesper Fast, who also had a goal in that game as well. So all the ex-Rangers <laughs> scoring. But yeah, it's, it's definitely maybe a new system for a lot of the new players all at once. And the defense definitely was surprised. I know the Hurricanes do have a lot of offensive talent. They Obviously. never start off strong defensively, the Islanders. Last year, they didn't either. No, but six goals is definitely a lot. What did they give extreme. up? Four goals the first game of the season last year? Six goals is definitely a lot for anybody, no matter how bad your defense is. Again, Svechnikov is a great player. Like you mentioned, Ajo is a young superstar in the end. NHL, Tara Vinen. It's a great team that the Hurricanes have, but again, six goals definitely a lot and is definitely surprising for an Islanders defense that is young, is fast, and great system for sure. And yes, they're going to start slow. And you're right, you, don't, you can't blame Sorokin. It's a first year as a full time starter now with Varlamov hurt. He didn't do this last year, so definitely an adjustment process for him. Give him time for sure. He's phenomenal when he is going. And again, the Hurricanes, a good offensive team, probably one of the top three teams in the Metro. Their offseason was very weird, but they're still very talented. Talented. I'm going to go back to the Islanders. And last year in game number one, they lost two to one against the Capitals. They won four to one against the Jets. Then they lost five to two against the Oilers. Then they lost five to two against the Hurricanes. So it took a little while for the Islanders to get their defense moving. And I believe this defense is going to be one of the best in the league. Adding Zidane Chara doesn't make them worse. It makes them better. I'm just questioning how they started off Thursday night. Barzell scored the first goal, which they actually recalled the play. And they saw it went past the line. They were up one to nothing. After they got the first goal, everything started piling up. And maybe because Matt Martin wasn't playing, that fourth line wasn't at its top end. But I can't say Matty Martin. Matty Martin isn't Connor McDavid. He's not Sidney Crosby. But I think that this team is a lot better than they played yesterday. I think they're going to play better. I think they're a dangerous team. The question is, is this team, with the pressure that they have on them this year, is that pressure going to be on them now this year to be one of the favorites where they're not going to come out strong and they're not going to play well and it's going to make them even worse as a team? That's going to be the question that only the Islanders are going to have to answer. We have seen this for teams. When the pressure is on them, they don't play well. And the Islanders are expected to be a Stanley Cup competitive team this year. They're the same team they were last year. One goal away from going to the Stanley Cup Finals. Back-to-back years in Eastern Conference Championship against the Tampa Bay Lightning, who, by the way, did not look good in Game 1 either. With they all the good yesterday either. We knew that this is not going to be the same Tampa Bay Lightning team. They lost a lot of players in the offseason. Very important players. One of them went to the Rangers, Goudreau. So this is what happens. The Islanders kept the same team, and they added players, good veteran players, and some young players, too. So the Islanders are expected to be better than they were last year with all the signings that they've had, Speed. You brought up a good point, too, with the pressure of being more of a favor. And again, where they finish is to be determined still. The it's so early. One game. Is, yeah. Come on. The Metropolitan 
Metropolitan Division is very good. It can go in many different combinations with the Capitals, with the Hurricanes, with the Penguins. Philadelphia could be a lot better this year. It could go many different ways. And you're right, because there are teams that definitely do that where they're better as an underdog. The Sabres the won after. one game, and everybody's talking about how they won the one game, and they're in first place in the Atlantic Division. And everybody's like, well, look at the Sabres. Do you think the Sabres are going to be a good team no, this they, year? They're good for come a month on. every year and then fall off. Come on, guys. Yeah, come on. Just relax. But going back to what I was saying with the underdog versus the favorite, Nashville was like that. After they went to the Cup as an eight seed, they as a one seed and a two seed the next two years, they didn't do much in the playoffs. Colorado's kind of getting that vibe, too. They're good as an underdog for a while. Now they're all of a sudden starting to be the new great regular season team that falls apart. And even Carolina last year, division champions, and then they lost in the second round against the Tampa Bay Lightning and did not look any good. They weren't even competitive with them. I think they lost the five games. So certain teams are just better in that kind of role. So it'll definitely be an adjustment for the Islanders if that circumstance does happen because they've been the underdogs, the wild card, and the three seed last year and the four seed the the year after. So what kind of role will that put on them. Barry Trotz has had a lot of favorites in the past with Washington. Now, granted, Washington chokes every year, except for their cup run. But still, is it going to be a difference for them? Because he did well at Nashville in the playoffs when they were kind of underdogs, too. They won a couple of playoff series. I believe they went to a Western Conference Finals. So it'll be definitely an adjustment if that's the case. The Islanders are going to travel a lot in the first month of hockey. You have to watch how they were positioned this week, especially in game number one, and they were showing the flights and where they're going in the next month. Oh, travel distance. They're going to be traveling a lot. With all the traveling, it's going to cause a lot of sleeping habits and, and certain things. It's going to affect their gameplay. But as the season progresses, the Islanders are always figure things out. And they go on these 10, 8 game winning streaks and they start to move past all these teams. I think the Penguins could be good this year if they can get healthy. The Blue Jackets will definitely be a threatening team. Hurricanes are always a threatening team. They're going to be good. They're very well coached. They have a good GM. Remember, John Davidson's back with the Blue Jackets. And the Flyers, who haven't played yet, or the Devils, both teams are expected to be pretty good this year too as well with some of the acquisitions they made. So as far as the Rangers are concerned, I know they've lost two games in a row and there's 80 games left. There's a lot of hockey left. And I know Ranger fans want to jump off a bridge and say, trade Panarin like the Beef said the other day, and, <laughs> which I think is outrageously crazy. Now, do I think Panarin is the best player on the Rangers? You got to be a great two-way player to be considered the best player on the team. Tyler says Panarin is the best player on the team, a top five player. He is not a top five player because he's not a good defensive player. So when I look at the top players in the league, if you don't play two-way hockey, you're not a top five, top ten player. Now, Panarin is a top 15 player, absolutely is. Offensively, he's probably one of the most talented offensive players in the league. But you can't depend on offense if you expect to win Stanley Cups, as the Rangers have proven year in and year out, especially by the end of the season. The Rangers need defense. They need to play better defense and need to find defensemen that are actually going to play in this offense, this defense, to make this team better. Now, Gerard Gallant is a good coach. The problem with Gerard is over the last couple of years, he's been coaching the junior team. He hasn't been in the NHL. He has been successful in the NHL. We've seen what he did with the Las Vegas Knights, but he's never won. And when you look at the Rangers, the Rangers are not expected to just get into the playoffs. They're looking to win. And what we've seen in the first two games is the Rangers have not played up to the standard where Ranger fans want them to play. And Chris Drury, I think it was a mistake. I think they should have kept John Davidson. But they went with the younger guy, the newer guy. We're going to see where Drury is and what this team is this year. If Drury doesn't get this team in the playoffs or squeak into the playoffs, I think it's going to be proven to be a huge mistake for the Rangers on why they shouldn't have fired John Davidson. I think Drury's offseason as a whole, I've mentioned, was average. But will it be enough to take the leap now that the Metropolitan Division is back, rearranged to its normal This is a good division, by the way. That's going to be very tough. You're going to have to hope that a Penguins team or a Capitals team, maybe one of those veteran teams falls off. Maybe the Flyers aren't the offseason darlings that we thought they would be, bouncing back after last year being bad. Now, in terms of the first two games, there's a lot of flaws that the Rangers have had so far. I think offensively possessing the puck is one of them because the Rangers have always been known for building building this young offensive depth. And to a certain extent in David Quinn's system, they did a good job possessing the puck. Didn't make their defense good, but it made them not like egregiously bad 30th in the league, like some defenses because they possessed the puck. Now this 
the first two games, they've had a lot of trouble with that. Now, Washington's defense is pretty good. The Stars' defense is very good. Now, maybe that has something to do with it, but still, maybe it has something to do as well with these players either impulsively shooting or impulsively passing, which has never been the Rangers' problem. The Rangers never impulsively shoot whatsoever, but still, I think the Rangers' offensive flow, creativity, is definitely flawed so far the first couple games, which is surprising considering the amount of young talent they're supposed to have. Also, their goaltending has not looked good. Everybody thinks the circuit is the next up-and-coming Henrik Lundqvist. He needs to produce. They need to produce. And goaltending is so very important. I've taken my shots at Sorokin. Sorokin did not look good for the Islanders in game number one. Do I think this is Sorokin? No. I think he's a much better goaltender. I think he's going to play better as the season progresses, as well as I believe the Ranger goaltenders are going to play better. But the problem with the Rangers is defense. And going into the season, I've said this last season, what do the Rangers need to do? Fine defensemen. They didn't do it again this year. What scares you about the Rangers is not the fact that they can't put the puck in the net. What scares you, are they able to stop the offenses that they're going to play against so far in the last two games against the Dallas Stars? And let's be honest, the Dallas Stars are an old man's team. They should have whipped Dallas's butt. We know what the Capitals are, but guess what? The Capitals are an old team, too. You play two old teams, they shouldn't have kept up with you. You are the faster team. Why are they outskating you? Why are they outscoring you? There is some concern for the Rangers. Rangers, because if they can't beat a team by overscoring against them, well, then what are they going to beat them with? Yeah, as this defense is going to progress into the season, they're going to have to possess the puck more as a result, even if it means making those extra passes, too. But be creative with it. Don't just make seven passes for no reason and then don't do anything with it either. And that's the problem the Rangers' offense has had for years, no matter who's been the coach, whether it's Tortorella, Vigneault, even David Quinn to some extent. You've got to be creative passing, to Make it work and just possess the puck more. The defense isn't going to be a strong point, and... It's going to improve maybe as the young players get developed more in this system. But right now, everyone's new at once outside of Fox and Truba and Miller. Those are really the only three. New line mates, everything going together in, in a more physical system for Gallant. But still, something you got to realize with these offensive players is puck possession matters a lot in an analytic era of hockey, too. So they have to make those adjustments. Again, two good defensive teams so far that they've played. But like you said, two older teams that I'm surprised they wouldn't skate more around and try to create more shots with. Dallas is a very good defense. It has some good young defensemen, but their offensive players are all older. 